people. There must be a million ideas out there. <laughs> now, something somebody could wear. Anything. <laughs> oh, sweet Judy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron. And for today's video, we're headed to the world of Diablo 4. The patch notes have officially dropped all 6,600 words of it, and I have read every single word. Now, I'm going to link this in the description if you want to read it for yourself, because I'm going to skip 80% of it. A lot of it is bug fixes and just little tweaks here and there. I don't want this video to be, you know, 30 minutes long. So we're going to cover the meat and potatoes, the big points. Now, if you go to Twitter, if you go to Discord, if you go to the forums, if you go to Reddit, if you go to any social media platform, it is almost universal outrage over these patch notes. And I don't want to say for the first time, but, you know, I'm going to go against the grain on this one. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. I truly believe that. And for me, Blizzard came out and said that this is preseason, right? This is previously. Hey, learn the campaign, learn the story, have fun. Get to know the systems, learn the map, right? Of course, there is going to be massive balance changes and bug fixes and all this stuff is going to be reorganized. You already have a set meta of people doing billions and billions of damage. Do you really think they're going to leave that in the game for season one? I mean, I get it. The whole idea is to get it as balanced as possible going into season one. And when 99.9% .9 of people have to use vulnerability or damage reduction, of course, they're going to reel that stuff in. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I cover the entire genre. This seems like total standard practice. I, I just, I don't understand the outrage. So for me, like until I play season one, you know, I'm going to leave my opinion there. Okay. Patch notes. And again, linked in the description, we're getting six new unique items. And one of them is extremely rare. And it's this new unique staff gain a random shrine effect for 10 to 20 seconds after killing an elite enemy can only occur every 30 seconds. Yes. A shrine build is possible but again they put a little note in here this is an extremely rare drop so it's probably going to be added to the pool of other uniques you will never see unless you hit the hit the lottery a new barbarian unique sword is coming lucky hit your core skills have a 20 percent chance to freeze enemies for three seconds this is pretty cool kind of thinking for a new spin to win cold barb might be fun Flesh Render, a new one-handed mace, debilitating roar, and blood howl deal damage to nearby poisoned enemies. A lot of my builds on Icy Veins use debilitating roar and blood howl. So this might be unbelievably awesome. This is what I want to actually test more than anything. Necromancer is getting the lidless wall. Ooh, ah. And this is going to be for Bone Storm and being able to cast more Bone Storms. Rogue is getting the Eagle Horn unique bow it's for penetrating shot and Sorcerer is getting the Oculus. Now the Oculus, very famous wand from Diablo 2. And I've been seeing the most buzz and questions around this. Listen to this. Gain the effect of the teleport enchantment for free. When you evade using teleport enchantment, you are taken to a random location. Like a random location on your screen random location on the map like random like how i don't know that's pretty cool i love seeing stuff like that i think that's a good idea i think that's a good idea so anyways that's pretty cool new seven legendary aspects you've got a utility aspect when there are at least five close enemies stun for two seconds two to four craven you gain 20 to 40 increased movement speed when moving away from slower chilled enemies so this is what I'm thinking, this Craven aspect, okay, with the new Barbarian unique sword where you're doing cold damage inside of Whirlwind. Mm -hmm. I now own Barbarian for Icy Banes, so like Barbarian is very much on my brain. Including this, Ancestral Charge. Charge now calls forth four Ancients who charge dealing 50 to 100% normal damage. Please believe a charge build is in the future. Druid Subterranean, Poison Creeper. We've seen this one during the leak. Poison Creeper active also casts Landslide and Circle Around You. Earth skills deal 10 to 20% increased damage to poisoned enemies. So Earth and Poison might have a union here with Creeper. 
And the Necromancer Blood Lance will consume blood orbs, also conjure less lances from them. Each additional blood lance deals 20 to 50% damage. Yeah, as he's got this rogue. Um, offensive aspect, every third cast of puncture, poison immune for 100 to 150 damage. Source, after spending 200 to 100 mana, your next firewall is free cast and will destroy incoming small missiles. Source has a lot of interesting aspects and stuff coming for this patch. When you talk about destroying small missiles, I'm wondering how that'll work on boss mechanics. So pretty cool. Now we're going to skip a bunch of stuff. Bug fixes. Accessibility. Challenges. Cooperative play. Dungeons. Gameplay. Actually, we'll stop at gameplay here for a second. Now again, linked in the description if you want to read it for yourself. Now under gameplay, there's only a couple things here as, er, as of note. And again, if you main rogue, you want to go back and check it out. But on here. Uh, fix an issue. This is for Barbarian. Fix an issue where stacking Berserk, Ripping, Skullbreaker, and Anima aspects would allow players to deal extreme amounts of damage. That's fixed. This is Whirlwind. Whirlwind crushed. Okay. Fix an issue where the outer edge of Quakes granted by Hammer of the Ancients via the aspect of the Ancestral, e ancestral Echoes was dealing far more damage than intended. The Hammer of the Ancients... Huge nerf. And it's not a nerf, though. So these ones are different. These are fixed bugs that were working improperly. And they put a note right here. We recognize this adjustment is a significant decrease to Hammer of the Ancients Barbarian build, but we do not want its strength to be reliant on an underlying bug. That's where people get so upset. It's like it was a broken build that was not working as it's intended. It's hard for you to be outraged and mad because of this change. You were exploiting it, right? I don't know. People get, people get mad. Pulverized took a little bit of a hit. Um, Tornado's got a buff, which just seems freaking crazy. Necromancer's in a good place. Rogue felt fine. Source felt fine. General, we're not going to cover. Helltides, we will cover later on. Items and aspects, these are all just little tweaks. Monsters, little tweaks. Quests and events, little tweaks. User interface and experience. We will cover experience a little later. Loading screen. Ooh, we're getting new images on your loading screens. I know that's what you've been waiting for. Okay. Gameplay updates. Here we go. Here we go. Altar of Lilith unlocks are now account wide. We knew this. Map discovery is now account wide. We knew this. Whispers will no longer reward sigil dust. I don't even know whispers gave sigil dust. Overall loot quality has been significantly improved for silent chests. The channel time to leave dungeons is so weird. So it used to take three seconds to leave a dungeon. Now it takes five. Who cares? It's so weird. We generally reduce the tendency for many monsters to move around in combat. This is huge. I'm so I main druid in barbarian. Listen to this. We have generally reduced the tendency for many monsters to move around in combat so that melee characters don't have to chase down their enemies as much. Man, that is great. I always try to use dash abilities because it's so agitating, freaking chasing people down. World tier. Nobody plays world tier two. I shouldn't say that. Most people don't play world tier two. So they're going to try and get you to do it. Gold for world tier two is going from 15 to 20. Monsters will now drop 15% more items. But nothing is on here about them giving a boost to the experience, like an added boost. Okay. Level scaling inside of dungeons and most overworld territories has been adjusted for world tier three and four. Monsters will begin to trail behind the player in level after certain points up to a maximum of five levels behind. The change does not affect world bosses, legion events, fields of hatred, hell tight and nightmare dungeons. So this is just regular dungeons and just the open world areas areas. OK, so here is the example for world tiers and it's showing world tier three and four. And I guess if you're jumping from one to three, this is going to make it not feel as much as of a jump for you getting murdered. I feel like it's the idea of trying to counter the uh, scaling. So here's the example for it. It's showing world tier three and world tier four examples. And the idea, I think, is pretty simple. Normally, it's like you hit level 70 and the enemies are now 70, 71. Where now they can trail behind you, so you're going to feel that power increase. The idea is trying to combat scaling. We'll have to test it out and see. 
Experience. Reward experience for completing Whispers in the World 3 and 4 have been significantly increased. You will notice a huge boost in trying to get you to complete your tree. So, you know, at least there's that. We'll see. All right, we have come up to one of the outrage. We are adjusting bonus experience for rewards for killing monsters that are higher level than the player. Preseason, right now, level one, or one level higher, 15%, two level higher is 20%, three levels higher, 25%. That is now moving, this is huge. One level higher, 1.5%, which was 15%, two levels higher, 3%, 10 levels higher, 15%. Wow. Wow. That is a huge difference. So if you were level 70 and you were fighting a level 71 enemy, you'd be getting a 15% boost. Now to get that same 15% boost, you got to fight a level 80 enemy. Whew. We are also adjusting experience rewards from monster level offsets for higher wor world tiers. Current world tier level offsets, 1, 2, and 3, changing this to 3, 6, and 10. Ugh. And basically it's just saying that, uh, it gives an example. You are level 1, your friends bring you to world tier 4 and leave you at the entrance of the dungeon. They start killing level 100 monsters. Prior to Season of the Malignant, you got level 100 monster XP, 1 plus 25. After Season of Malignant, you get level 11 monsters, 1 plus 15. Power leveling. So you're still going to be able to power level. This is still going to be possible. Just at a much slower pace. Okay. Which is fine. Kill the monsters yourself. Hell tides they are updating. Every time you're in a hell tide, it's two levels higher. Now it's going to be three. I'm fine with that. The tortured gift mystery chest, they're moving from 175 to 250. Again, cinders normally aren't a problem for me. I'd be more upset if they nerfed the mystery chest. So just making the mystery chest cost more. I mean, I'm don't I don't really care. All interactable objects in Helltide zones now have a small chance of dropping cinders as well. So all the little things you break along the way can also drop cinders, which might help offset this difference. No big deal. No big deal. Okay. We're now reached main outrage. We've now reached the level of main outrage. This paragraph is basically saying uh, everybody uses the same crap. And we want to try and balance it. Okay, great. Uh, I'm not going to go into each class. Again, you can go read these for yourself. But I am happy that I have a double swing and upheaval build, both going up on icy veins, and they both got a buff. So that's fun. Uh, monster, shrines, where is it? Here we go. We are increasing the availability of affixes below to make them easier to include in different builds. So it can now appear on pants. They're just they're just making it so different affixes can be more balanced. Barrier generation can now appear on all classes. Lucky hit with barrier, mastery skill, damage, resistance to all elements. They're just making some changes there. Here's a big one. The core stats on weapons have been overperforming, so they're pulling them back from 50% on everything to 25%. Okay. You might, not, you might not want to take your core stat on your weapon anymore. That is going to take some testing. Uh, more outrage. Cooldown reduction affixes often felt mandatory due to their raw power. Correct. Cooldown reduction, 30% across the board. The cooldown reduction, huge nerf. Critical strike damage and vulnerability damage, huge nerf. Vulnerability damage is reduced by this number you are reading is correct. 40%. 40. And again, the reason why this is so huge is because it was a mandatory stat. Go find a build guide that doesn't have vulnerability damage on their rings and doesn't have exploit glyph on their paragon board. There's not many because it was so strong. So they're reeling it in. Okay. They also killed the cooldown reductions on offhands. 
and they decreased damage to controlled enemies. But they boosted frozen, because nobody used frozen, everyone used control. Now, I'm going to highlight this for everyone. All right, where are we? Right here. All of this highlight is almost every type of damage type in the game is getting a blanket boost. 25%, 40%, there's some big ones in here, okay? Now, do I think that this blanket damage increase is going to offset damage to controlled enemies decrease, cooldown reduction, crit, vulnerability damage, and core stat? No. No, I do not. I think you're still taking an overall big damage decrease. But they're trying to bring it in line. And last but not least, the final outrage. This is all of your damage reductions, okay? All of your damage reductions. For the most part, you are getting an overall damage reduction nerf by 25%. So on all of these, 25%. Now I was expecting to see something in here around resistances. Hey, you want to nerf damage reduction? That's fine because it's mandatory for your builds. Do it. But give us something so that we can maybe use resistances to offset this. So those are the patch notes. I know, I know. It's a lot of change in here, but it's definitely going to shake up the meta and shake up the game. And this is Blizzard's focus for the future. I don't know. I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to require a lot of testing. And I mean, you can tell that they are trying to get things in line and balanced. So we are just going to have to wait and see. Right now on Icy Veins, I now own Barbarian and Werewolf Druid. So many awesome builds are coming down the pipeline. Link is in the description. We are updating them all for season one right now. If you are looking for a season starter. So check those out. That's all I've got on the patch notes. I'm okay with it. I want to know your opinion. Do you think D4 is dead? Do you think this is going to kill the game? Do you think you need to wait till season two? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hopefully you were entertained or at least learned something. Aaron, out.